Welcome to Photo Work. Today, our interview is with makeup artist based out of LA, Ian Mackey. And today, he's sharing with us his story and awesome tips for beginning makeup artists. Stay tuned. Enjoy. Welcome, Ian. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, good to see you. Um, we wanted to start off the podcast with our favorite question. How did you get started? Okay, well, where do I even start? <laughs> um, so again, I'm from the Bay Area. Um, my mom is a cosmetologist. So I kind of always grew up around hair and makeup and knowing that I've you know, always wanted to be in the beauty industry. Um, but I am uh, come from a very traditional Filipino family. So I wouldn't say it was like don't do this, but I definitely felt the pressures of, um, you know, it's not the most manly thing to do. So even though I was like doing my cousin's hair and makeup for their pageants and I mean, I'm like behind closed doors, I would literally tell them, Hey, like if my aunt would walk in, I'm like giving them the, the comb or like the makeup <laughs> just because I didn't want them to know. Yeah. So, you know, they were in on the secret. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, I would, I have been always been doing it. I worked my mom's salon at her front desk and just watching all the stylists. And, you know, honestly, the thing that I think caught my eye the most that I wanted, uh, that I just felt was so great was how my mom made these girls feel. Um, even when she passed, like her, um, her, uh, the service was full of her clients that were just like, she was my best friend. Like, you know, I loved her so much. And I was like, wow, like the impact that you can have on somebody after a fresh cut or after, you know doing their face is just amazing so I always like really was in love with that aspect of how you can give girls just like some kind of power mm -hmm. after a, you know after a makeover <laughs> uh so that's kind of like how I got introduced to the the beauty industry um and then uh you know when I like got old enough and I graduated high school and I was like all right what do I want to do with my life I did this like singing thing for a second which was fun but um I really wanted to get into the beauty industry but I knew that it was going to be something that was a little frowned upon on my family um uh, and I didn't want you know, I just kind of always wanted to just glide through. I didn't want to like make too much of a splash. So um, I ended up going to school for advertising and I graduated with an advertising degree from the Art Institute of California, San Francisco. And um, I was telling you, I mm -hmm. actually had my first internship and that turned into a job at an, at an advertising agency. I don't know if they're still around, Beanstalk Media based out of Oakland. Mm -hmm. And um, I got laid off. And Aww. then me, but my best friend also was working in advertising. She was working at McCann and she got laid off at about the same time. And she's like, fuck, what do we want to do? And I was like, oh God, I don't know. And she's like, this is great. Cause like, it's the first time we ever got laid off in our lives. And we're like getting, we're collecting money from the government. And we had like a little savings account. And we were like, what do we want to do with our lives? And I was like, why don't we just start something? So we started a fashion brand called Frock LA. And um, it like for two small little like, kids in the Bay Area it was like a huge thing and we were able to like get the attention of big department stores and we moved here on a whim just because it was like hard to do things from the Bay and then um, uh, you know they were just asking for a lot and we just couldn't we just couldn't make it happen so the online business has still started but after that I was like all right it's time to find like another job so I was telling you mm -hmm. that I um, got a job at an advertising agency based out of New York called Jaywalk and then that's when I really got um, uh, introduced uh, on the professional side to like bigger brands like BB and mm -hmm. Ellie Tahari and Bear Essential. So that's when I really got to see what goes on behind the scenes with those bigger companies. And um, my main client was BB at the time. I was working on their online stuff and like helped their creative director with like the big campaigns. And I was just like always so thrilled about how the creative process and like the just what it took to in, in order to make campaigns even on like a, a weekly basis on their online like it, it's always a different story it's always a different hair and makeup um so yeah and I was responsible for a lot of like their online like making the so they had the big campaign and then I had to just I had to bring it to life on a on a daily basis on their online platform so but i was always like you know i would always send hair and makeup like um mood boards and you would always find me with hair and makeup and actually i feel like the, the hair and makeup artist people kind of almost hated me a little bit because i would like i worked in a different office and they would send me photos when they were ready and i would be like 
yeah, that's great. Let me just go down there really quick. Because I come from a, a hair and makeup background, I'd be like, where's the 222? Or like, where's the brown brush? I would come and like fix it the way that I wanted to. Um, yeah, so, they probably hated you. Yeah, I'm sure they did, but the creative director loved me. Right, right, right. Everything was like perfect. Um, but yeah, no, they probably definitely hated me. Uh, so yeah, that and that's how I knew like, okay, I really, this is like, that's home. Mm-hmm. I want to do this. So anyway, long story short, uh, my mom passes and I take a year off to just kind of figure out my life. And then I started back into the advertising world and I was working like day in and day out for a candle company, which is like a completely different like realm. But at the time I was just like, look, funds are running out. I need to get back to work. So, and this company was like, they were just racking in the dough and I was just like so happy to be a part of it. I was able able to really find out who their demographic was, really helped grow their creative team. But then I just, there was something about it um, that just didn't, yeah, like it was great to have the salary and to make the money, but it wasn't like feeding my soul. I was like going into work every day and being like, oh my God, I hate my life. Mm. So then um, um, actually what did it for me was uh, an uncle of mine that I haven't seen in years had posted on my wall about like being gay. And I have been, I've spent 34 years of my life doing, trying to do all the right things, trying not to like, you know, make people mad or like talk about me. And if you met my sister, you would know, like she's just like, (laughs) if she watches this, she's gonna laugh. But she's like the worst critic of life. Like, and she's also just like Mother Teresa. So if I post a photo in my underwear on Instagram, I will hear it. I'm like, (laughs) that's how gay people communicate in West Hollywood. (laughs) Hello. 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 She's like, you have nephew. I was like, just introduce them to a whole nother kind of people. Okay. Anyway, so. So, small town. Anyway, I love them. Um, so, um, yeah, like, I had just always felt like the criticism of having to be a certain kind of way, a certain kind of Asian person. And then, so he posted this thing on my Instagram, and he was just like, you know, I hope I hope God finds you. Um, and all my friends came to my rescue. Mm-hmm. But as a traditional Filipino person, you're not allowed to, like, talk to back to your elders so I kind of broke the rule and I told him to like I told him to fuck off and like crawl back into the trailer that he walked out of like all of it I was just so mad because he was attacking my friends and that's when I realized I was like I have spent 34 years just like trying to make other people happy when I really just need to do what I want so I me and the job that I was at at the time we decided to part ways and then I was like I'm gonna I'm going to pick up makeup and hair. I feel like this is what my mom would have wanted me to do. This is what she was doing. And this is what I'm super passionate about. And I never looked back and I could not be happier. So that's where I'm at now, nine months in. And I'm just like, yes, I honestly like you have the, the moments that are like super busy and then you have the lulls. But I will tell you, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't like take it back. I love what I'm doing. I f- feel every day with like I feel that I'm like doing the right thing. So. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Oh my god, all the hearts, <laughs> all the heart all emojis. The heart emojis. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, that was like a 20 minute story. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Man, it just sucks that you went through that with your uncle. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like I had to, and I feel like um, talking about it makes. Uh, there was never like an idol for me, uh, you know, the Filipino makeup artist or anybody gay in the mm-hmm. in the. Um, uh, in social media even like I, I it's hard for me to find somebody I relate to it's always like like Mario and he's like Latin mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. you know um, just it, there's nobody like like me I mm-hmm. feel like so me talking about the things that I've been through I'm just hoping that it like you know there's a little boy out there or a little girl that watches and is like oh my god it's okay it's okay to want to be different. It's okay to want to do hair and makeup. It's okay to like boys or like girls or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I'm just at a point in my life where I'm like, I'm just empowered to be me. And it wasn't until that moment, though, that I was like, fuck off. Like, I'm just going to, like, and I have, like, this is, at 34, I feel like the most comfortable. I feel mm-hmm. like just myself, and I couldn't be more confident, honestly, so... Yeah. So thanks, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I was welling up with tears there. <laughs> I knew this was gonna be an Oprah moment. Apparently, it was an Oprah moment. <laughs> I won't even get into that. Oh my god. Yeah. 
damn, Ian. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just hitting you with the hard ones. You did. <laughs> <laughs> the heavy hitters. That was a heavy one. <laughs> So along your journey, you've been able to pick up the skills of not only like incredible makeup artists, hair artists, but photographer, which makes you a triple threat and technically quadruple and maybe quintuple if we add in creative director <laughs> mm-hmm. and designer, right? right? Yeah. And fabulous dancer. Oh, and dancer God. and singer. You guys. And singer. <laughs> oh my God. If you should, everyone go follow Ian Maction on Instagram and watch his stories because he sings like an angel. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> thank you. I'm Filipino. It just comes with the, it just comes that we love to karaoke oh, and yeah, dance yeah, yeah. and so like i feel like you know you can't go to a filipino party without the karaoke machine on blasting with an uncle singing like you know frank sinatra and you're like calm down <laughs> <laughs> and you take the mic and you're like let me show you how it's done well yeah I, well no it's funny because i come from a family of singers my sister sings my cousins sing and it's like as soon as we're like, if you hand us a microphone, we're literally, like, glued to it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. I try, I'm like, as I've gotten older, I've, I'm have i like, oh, I don't know if that's my thing anymore. But, like, trust me, if you go to a family party, it's, like, the three of us just, like, murdering the karaoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. But uh, um, how do you, like, juggle photographer, makeup artist, hair artist? So, you know what's so funny? The way that I started the photography is, um, so I went to school for advertising. Um, I went to the Art Institute, and like some of our projects were uh, to create mock campaigns of campaigns that have already been done. So my first one was uh, Aquanet. I, like they were mm-hmm. like, here's a product, try to um, and you know come up with an ad and like go through um, what was it Shutterstock or whatever we had access to at the time, and like yeah. try to find um, photos that would like best you know fit whatever your goal was for the ad. And I would never be able to find like any, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, it's, I, I'm spending three, four, like eight hours looking through stock photography, but nothing was what I needed in order to make my concept come to life. So I'm like a really good talker and I conned my mom into like buying like a, like a, I had a 20D and I was like, I just want to, like my first camera ever, I didn't even know how to use the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, mom, like I need this, like, you know, I'm going to start shooting my own stuff, but I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but so I went on Craigslist and I was like, look, I need a few models, blah, blah, blah. Um, I need, that's how I met Janet. Like mm. I found her on Model Mayhem actually. Yep. And um, I was like, I need a makeup artist. I just knew like the, I've seen enough. <laughs> what Women Want was like what, like the, the movie that I was like basing my life off of with Mel Gibson. I was like, I want to be that guy. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I know I need a makeup artist. I'm going to need a few models and I'm going to like figure out how to use this camera. So um, I rent out a studio. I'm like fidgeting with this camera and like I find a setting that I thought I liked with the one main light and I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this. So I do it, and then I turn in the project, and, like, it won some awards. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I had no idea. My, my, t- my professor at the time was like, did you know you were a photographer? I was like, no, <laughs> I had no idea. So that's kind of what took that on. Mm-hmm. And then ever since then, I, like, kind of every every um, uh, project that we did, I always took the pictures. I always did. I just, like, like, I did a Levi's campaign, and I did, like, a bunch of other stuff, and I just... I don't know. I just got really comfortable with the camera. And then agencies were like, oh, do you want to shoot our models? I'm like, wait, does that mean I'm good or something? Because <laughs> anyway, so that's how I kind of like picked up the photography thing just by school. And like, but I always wanted to do uh, I, my whole thing is when my, I remember when my mom was at um, the salon, she was able to teach her stylist or, she, you know, be a mentor to her stylist because she knew what they what was happening. Like, here's how to curl hair. Here's how to put, you know, a weave in because she did it herself. I couldn't imagine myself t- telling somebody how to do something without knowing how to do it myself. So when I um, uh, graduated, actually, and like I was in my first professional setting, it was so easy for me to talk to a photographer because I was like, hey, let's get it from this angle or maybe try this lighting scheme or whatever because I did it. So, and I feel like it's more comfortable for a photographer to be like, oh, let me take some advice from some guy who's done it before because otherwise you're an asshole. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, why are you telling me what to do? Right. (laughs) Um, But then also, I mean, with the hair and the makeup, uh, I mean, I've like, so my, in, in, (laughs) 
in college, my my roommate was my um, my cousin who was a makeup artist for Mac, and like literally every day was so fun because I had this awesome camera, and we would turn my living room into like like all my girlfriends. We would just do their hair and their makeup, and then we would shoot them in the living room. I don't know. There was no like. I think it was MySpace at the time. Um, there wasn't like Instagram and social media like how it is right. now, but we were just taking photos for fun. I'm not even kidding you. We would like, and I learned how to Photoshop and liquefy, which you know, I was like your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it was like, it was so fun. And that's when I knew like, wow, this is like really what I want to do. I want to do the hair and the makeup and the photography. Photography is just so much work involved in it. Like your job doesn't end after the shoot ends like everybody else. The model comes, the hair and the makeup, and they, they're there to do that shoot. And then you have to go home, <laughs> go through the selects, edit everything. And I was just like, oh God. Like I'm in the professional world, it's like now I'm like, ugh. I just like it's a lot. And I I mean I I still do a bit of it now, but it's tiring. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, I do a girl's hair hair and their makeup and then I have to shoot them and then it's like I'm not done with you yet I still have to look through your photos and then you know, edit them and I'm so like the, if you had to ask me to like rank them I think my favorites makeup and then hair and then photography because it's not that I don't love it it's just a lot of work you guys and at least you're a team so that makes things a lot more fun I guess you know it and is it's easier not, it's not as lonely well and then yeah. we can like split up duties like if we if mm -hmm. I like for example Mylon will like rig or get lighting set up yeah. while I'm talking to the modeling yeah. and the makeup and yeah. the hair and we're telling them like what's going on in the shoot right and then we just transition right into shooting because he's like got everything set up yeah. yeah well I actually when we shot last mm -hmm. I loved you guys I, it was great because I felt like you guys didn't miss a beat yeah because there's two of you mm -hmm. shooting the same subject mm -hmm. and at two different angles so there's two different perspectives mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. yeah. like one subject which i think is awesome well thank you yeah of course how is it that you how is how you gained all your clients currently how do you gain clients how do you um, attract clients instagram <laughs> 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 no seriously <laughs> um i think that uh, you know, uh, I was it used to just be a personal page. It used to just be me singing and you know in my underwear or whatever, and then it it turned into this like inst uh, like uh, me showcasing my work, and that's actually really where I find most of my clients, all of them, um, or word of mouth. Um, it's like people that I've worked with that have um, uh, recommended me for other jobs. Uh, but the majority of it really is Instagram. Uh, I, you know, it's so funny. I went to this. Um, it was a makeup award show with um, a friend of mine who works at Brush Off. He's like, uh, he's the son of the owner. And uh, they had sponsored the event. And it's just like, it's so funny to me how social media has really been able to like take you to this platform because it was a, a room full of makeup artists and hair people. And I'm never really, I'm always shocked when people know who I am or what I am or whatever. And so I go to this event. And like two people were like, oh my God, are you Ian Max? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, we love your work. I was like, what like you see here they're like we love your we follow you on instagram i'm like oh my god i don't even have that many followers <laughs> but it's great to see the impact of what social media has because it's like i don't i don't know if i would have been able to reach that many people uh, otherwise so now i'm really just but i feel like it's like my new portfolio i mean i have a portfolio but like you know i feel like you go to the instagram first and then you do the portfolio thing so yeah i think um Instagram and social media and honestly networking is kind of like you have to be a, a like a, 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 a easy person to work with because otherwise I don't know how you're gonna book jobs mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. that's kind of what I've been doing nice um, good yeah. yeah that's one of my usually one of my questions <laughs> can you be a dick and get work you yes. <laughs> yes oh my god can I tell you oh yeah, yeah. so and I'm not even gonna say names but I'm just mm -hmm. gonna tell you yeah yeah uh, I was uh, I was lucky to get booked like three or four months of me getting into, um, you know, taking this seriously full time. And a makeup artist that I actually really look up to uh, asked me if I wanted to assist him on this big 14 hour job. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. And he was like, don't worry, it's going to get be, you're going to be paid for this, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. So I go to the job. I'm there. He leaves me, what, two hours in. And so, like, I'm left for, 12 hours by myself. Oh, and mind you, he gives me the wrong oh. time. So I'm there two hours before the call time was. And he was, and I call him and I'm like, oh my God, there's nobody here. And he's like, oh, I forgot. 
um, you didn't listen to your voicemail because I told you that he didn't leave me a voicemail. He was like, I told you that I was going to, um, that they moved the time. And I was like, no, okay, well, whatever. So I'm there early and he leaves and I'm literally there the whole time just with the job. But he was, he's a really nice guy kind of, but the whole time he was just talking about models that we knew and it was just like, but people still book him and I never got paid, but <gasps> I know horrible. So I was there for, I did the entire job mm. and I, but, and, and it's, it's so surprising to me because he kept talking about people mm -hmm. and that's the one thing that I try, I, like even right now I'm like, Oh my God, should I be doing this? But guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, because people need to know that <laughs> not everyone's a, any, an angel in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. So like I got caught into doing this job and I just like, it's just so crazy to me because he still books every day which I'm like that's awesome but how long does that last you know yeah. right it's gonna catch up I, I mean hopefully yeah. but then at the, um, you know what like more power to you I just can't operate in that funk in, in that manner I just have to be a good person at all times yeah. and you know talking about people even right now I'm just like oh my god but like I really do feel like people need to know especially if you're starting out like really look into the people that you're um, um, you know assisting you like for me, if I had somebody that was assisting me, I'd want to make sure that I was taking care of them. I want to make sure they were paid first. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I would want to work with people like that instead of people that are like, well, you know what? I'll have another assistant so you can just whatever. You know what I mean? And that's, I, but he's still getting booked. So yeah, you can be an asshole and still work <laughs> a lot actually. So <laughs> just to answer your question. <laughs> But don't be an asshole. But don't be. <laughs> Try not to be. You should really not be. There's no reason for that, you know? Yeah. I think it's more uh, being a dick to people that are booking you. He's doing it. The other, to be, he's probably right. really, really good. nice to getting the I'm the, the, the nice guy. Right. He's shitting on everybody else. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know what his relationship is with the client, but I know the relationship with like everybody who's around him. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And work yeah, gets yeah. round, you That's know? That's what I mean, yeah, because yeah. all those people will not recommend him. No. And yeah. And will say things. Even though his work is amazing, I'm not going to lie, it's so good. <laughs> guys, I used to be like, oh my God, he's amazing. <laughs> and then I like, I still think he's good. I'm not even going to take away from his artistry because he's a, he's great. But it was like, oh, it was like kind of like, it's kind of like the Michael Jackson, Michael yeah. Jackson thing where yeah. you're like, oh God, really? Really? Yeah. Damn it. Fudge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Up and coming makeup artists. What would you say to someone who's trying to break into the industry? How funny. Because um, <laughs> I was just watching your guys's, I watched something on your Instagram mm -hmm. and somebody had said like, just do the things that feed your soul. Mm -hmm. And I say, do the things that are going to feed your bank account <laughs> and your soul. <laughs> like I just started out and I've taken on every job, like every single one, like every one that I can possibly. Yeah, you probably rank them based on, the 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 client mm -hmm. and like the amount you're getting paid but like if you're not doing anything and this person's willing to pay you $150 to do their face and then go I don't care yeah I'm going to do it mm -hmm. so like one thing that I feel like a lot of new artists out there are not very business savvy and you look I'm all about feeding your soul and doing things that make that you love and you know whatever. But I also think that you don't want to be broke and you, you know, want to feed your bank account because this town's expensive. And if you have no money to do things, you're just going to be bored as fuck and just like not happy with your life. So I think that, um, for me being me starting out, I've been lucky to look, be, even be working, but I've taken on everything. Like I haven't been like, Oh, I'm going to be better than that. Or like, what we're shooting in a garage. No, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like right now I'm building my name I'm building my portfolio. I'm building, I'm just building, building, building. And especially because a lot of people look at me like, um, on the opposite end, like, they didn't even know that I did makeup when I moved into, the, you know, when I transitioned into it. So, like, for me, I'm just trying to build a repertoire of, like, clients, of, um, you know, portfolio work. Um, and, yeah, so I have not been very – I know some makeup artists right now that are like, oh, yeah, sh that's not the type of face that I would do. Well, I'm like, I don't care. Like, I – my as I said, my mom was, like, my – my anchor and just, she had every client under the sun. So like watching what she's able to do with just about everyone, like is really inspiring to me. And so I actually take it on as a challenge when you're a little, not difficult, but like if you, you have a face that I haven't quite worked on yet. So, 
you know, at the end of the day, I just want you to feel good about yourself, you to feel like a bum ass girl. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I think for new for new artists out there, like just to take on every job, get the experience because that's really what's. And I was telling you earlier mm-hmm. that like I look at the jobs that you know that um, are not like the big box commercial whatever. I um, I look at them as practice. Like you want to be able to practice every day, mm-hmm. and why wouldn't you practice when and and have someone pay you? You know, so. That's my advice for new um, artists out there is to really just take on, like, you don't be better than any job. I, I mean, I think at some point you can start getting really, you know, as as, as your um, your book grows and as your clients grow, yeah, you probably won't be doing, like, those other jobs. But in the beginning, I think it's important to just get your feet wet and do everything. <laughs> Feed your soul, though. Yes. <laughs> Test shoot a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because that's actually really what's going to feed your soul. Yes, when you get to play and do yeah. portfolio building. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, like, mix it up. Mm-hmm. Like, do the jobs that you don't want to do to pay your bills mm-hmm. and then segue and balance it out with working with amazing photographers mm-hmm. like you guys. Stop, and, stop. No, really. <laughs> and then, like, allowing yourself to play and feed your soul because otherwise you... I mean, I can understand why if you were just doing work you hated you would want to do something else. Mm-hmm. But as long as you like balance everything with balance, right? As long as you do those and do other things that really like, you know, anyway. So yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> I like that. Thanks. <laughs> and that's it for our interview with LA-based makeup artist, Ian Maction. Be sure to check out part two with Ian because he's amazing and we love him. Love you, Ian.